Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Have Not Room. We're talking about week uh, six now in the Big Brother 22 house. I had to make sure I did that math correctly. I'm mm-hmm. um, joined here as always by Chad and Brian to talk about the goings on of this week. Yeah, and, excited uh, to do so. Yeah, it's uh, the first week season where something marginally interesting happened, other than I guess Tyler trying <laughs> to quit last week, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, we have, uh, well, first of all, let's, let's, before we delve into the craziness of, hap- of happening kind of this week, let's take a moment, you know, eulogize, uh, Bailey here, our, uh, final pre of the season. Uh, she got to go home to Swaggy C in her Tesla and, uh, yeah. yeah. Everyone else is very jealous that, uh, she got pre it seems. <laughs> no one wants to stay on this jury. Yeah, a lot of people have talked about this season how being the first juror is their uh, is a position they're least wanting to get, uh, and it's the position that it's looking like a certain person who definitely is one of those people who are saying that is going to get. <laughs> but yeah, what do you, what do you guys think uh, Bailey's legacy is going to be here? Uh, you know, she's a Big Brother two time Big Brother player. Uh, she has done the challenge recently. She actually, from my understanding, I don't really watch the challenge, but from my understanding, she made the finals of the last season of the challenge. Um, and uh, so maybe maybe that's where her <laughs> she can find some more uh, success going forward. <laughs> what do you think, Chad? What do you think? Yeah, what's what's Bailey's legacy going to be here? Yeah. I mean, I was never too big on her. Um, she was always middle of the road for me. Um, and that's kind of where she ended up in terms of my big brother, like player gauge here. Um, I mean, she's not a flashy player. I mean, you see those moments where she'll get in people's faces, kind of. Um, I mean, the whole argument with Christmas was a little action, but like she only saw like the back half and really didn't explode on that much. She kind of kept her cool and, you know, was the one really motioning Devon out of there. So, I mean, she found her way into All-Stars, and I think she did about as well as I expected. I'm sure others expected her to do a little better. Um, I think she was likely going to go early jury, so maybe she did a little worse than I expected, but um, it all feels right. Yeah, I think... um... She's an okay Big Brother player. Um, she's shown that in the past, not on this season, that she's capable of winning challenges. Obviously, she did well on the challenge as a very challenge-heavy TV show. I'm sure she's good at those challenges. Um, I don't think having Tyler here necessarily helped her too much. Um, I think... Both of them had a lot to work through from BB20 that they did not work through with each other before going in the house, and it kind of put both of them in a bad position, which led to a very awkward week last week with everything that happened. Um, I think different circumstances, she potentially could go further, provided like someone like Tyler was in the house, provided she you know, was more in on the pregame, alliance but i think it's it's hard for her and davon especially where they certainly got lumped together just you know like they're they're friendly in the house but i guess they had never met each other outside the house so it's kind of messed up that they got um, automatically lumped together and um she just trusted the wrong person in christmas and paid for it and that's how it goes sometimes um i think probably will not see bailey play again i think this is probably the last time we see her on big brother anyways um and it just uh you know it wasn't it wasn't meant to be it was it was a tough draw for her having to play with tyler again and having some maybe outside stuff that was out of her control work against her in some way. So, you know, uh, I like, I like Bailey personally, so I was sad to see her go, but if it had to be her, Devon, obviously Devon's my winner pick. So I was hoping that it was her instead of Devon. 
Yeah, I think that there's a few things that are interesting about Bailey's kind of game this season. The first that it's kind of gotten buried uh, in like the, the other things that have happened on the season is that Bailey was almost in the committee alliance, which mm -hmm. is now like basically like pseudo running the season for mm -hmm. like for now. Like it, Memphis wanted Bailey in that alliance uh, at the start, and Danny was actually the one who nixed it and said to bring Nicole in instead. Um, and if Memphis had like just spoken, because like the way Memphis formed the alliance that we talked about early on was he went to each individual person and was like, hey, we're going to do this kind of like loose alliance thing that kind of turned into like a much uh, more stable uh, because he won the, pre the following HOH. Um, but like if, he'd, if he had gone and talked to Bailey before going and talking to Danny, then she could have just ended up in the power alliance, uh, like incidentally. Um, and that's like kind of one place where she kind of got a little bit unlucky. Uh, and then also, uh, it didn't really help that she took probably way too long to really understand the power structure of the house mm -hmm. um, to like a degree where she could actually make, you know, cogent, feasible moves to try and reposition herself. Like by the time she kind of figured things out, it was a little bit too little too late. Uh, but yeah, I think that, you know, she did have like a number of, there were a number of moments in the season that were certainly unlucky. It's been unlucky for the people on the outside yeah. uh, that five out of the six HOHs have been in this committee alliance. Mm -hmm. um, and then so. the other one was a yeah, like and, orbiter of the committee alliance. Yeah. We might as well be like the seventh member. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, as as much as we harp on the pre-jury people for not coming together this season and kind of sniffing it out when Janelle and Kayser kind of figured it out early, there wasn't much they could do. They were, none of them were ever in power yeah. until this week where a couple of the outsiders actually got an executed power on the house, you know. Yeah, so I think we should get into that then. Uh, we come into this week, it's uh, Danny's HOH. Uh, at this point, there's been kind of this, like as we talked about, like this cold war brewing between Tyler and Danny. Um, and like Tyler, you know, tried to get a move on Danny. Didn't really try very hard, uh, but it's definitely been something in the back of his head. And Danny kind of comes into this week. Uh, very unsure of whether or not she actually wants to take the shot at Tyler. Uh, and I think that's really been uh, a huge issue for her, is her lack of commit, uh, like committal commitment, I guess, to mm -hmm. whether or not she actually wants to take the shot. And that's kind of led her in a position where she's like kind of taken a swing, but like intentionally missed. <laughs> like the right. worst thing you can do. Um so yeah, Danny puts up Kevin and David. David uses his uh, power that we saw on the Tuesday episode uh, to take himself down. He puts on like a little, you know, show to try and get people to think that it wasn't him who used it, even though the power is like it's, it's designed in a way where you would never use it on anyone but yourself. Um, yeah, the only way like it would make sense is if it's like you want a power to yeah. disrupt. It, but you can't use it on yourself. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think are we all in agreement that if you have a power like this, you just own it. And it's like, oh, that was me. I took myself off the block because I won this power. So, yeah. sorry, Danny. Yeah, no, there's no reason not to just own it. Like, I mean, if you can pull it off and, like, create chaos, I guess. Mm. But there was just, he, he didn't really have a plan outside of, like, I want to <laughs> lie about it. Like, he didn't have, like, a, a way to actually execute a lie in any meaningful way. Mm. Kind of he really just wanted to show off his uh, ability to cry on command, it yeah. seemed. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. like, the way he won it, like, the whole, like, dark challenge, it's, you know, it takes maybe some skill, but, like, I would argue there's a lot of luck and chance mm -hmm. in that challenge, so, like, who really cares? Like, just own it, dude. And I love the scene where Cody's just, like, laughing at him, like, come on, man, we all know. Like, oh, what he asked was, Kevin. That was like, <laughs> Kevin, did you save me? I was like, I'm on the block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I about how to save myself. <laughs> just, oh, yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. just own it, man. I mean, good for you, though. Congrats. <laughs> I know. Happy for him. Glad he could disrupt the season, as it were. 
Oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we go to our veto. Where this episode was very, uh, the Tuesday episode, uh, it was very campy. Uh, it was, like, very, mm-hmm. like, kind of, like, middle school Big Brother era of, like, <laughs> where, you know, we're just, like, you know, people are like, oh, we're doing, like, the uh, high school student film project special effects, you know. <laughs> people, like, disappearing, you know, they're editing it, and everyone's like, oh, my God. Oh. Where'd they go? <laughs> Where'd they- the only good thing that came with this, I know someone said Nicole uh, with her sponsors. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yikes. Oh, oh man. Uh, maybe she earned one back this week. Mm-hmm. We're acting. Maybe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I actually really enjoyed this veto comp. Um, yeah. It's such a different skill set of anything else that's happened that is, like, truly who knows who would have had an advantage or disadvantage, and it led to someone not in the Power Alliance winning, which well, something I really like about Big Brother is before, like, the last few seasons, a lot of the comps seemed potentially winnable by anybody, potentially, like, dictated by just the roll of a ball hitting, you know, a random object on something, or, like, it felt like anyone could win, and that's what made Big Brother exciting. And then we've moved away from that a little bit, but this felt like a coming back to that, and it's what makes the show so good. Agreed. I loved this challenge. No, it was mm-hmm. great. It was... It, I think someone... I think Brent from Rabbit's podcast tweeted it. Um, he was saying, like, this is a skill set that's never been used on the Big Brother, so it was really cool to see a new challenge, um, and anyone could have won that easy. Except Tyler, the jeweler, who didn't win that challenge. I mean, <laughs> Like, come on, man. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how much he himself makes of jewelry. I don't know. Is it, is it makes jewelry, jewelry and he just kind of, like, promotes and sells it? I don't know. How, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, I was like, he's got this in the bag. He's a jeweler. He was doing great <laughs> until he breathed on his pile and <laughs> knocked know? it over. Yeah. You know? That's so funny. I think, like, surgeon, like, a surgeon would pretty much mm-hmm. be the only person who would, like, naturally have this kind of a skill set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so no like, Enzo. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that was a great confessional. <laughs> if Enzo were a surgeon, his patient would be dead in three seconds. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. Oh man, Christ! Yeah, no, I, I like it. I wish they, I hope they do more like unique kind of random skill challenges like this. That you know, it's not just like the uh, like strong person is going to win or like the most athletic person is going to win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, like you mentioned, we got a Dave Vaughn's first comp win in three seasons of Big Brother. It had to come eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. I wish they gave her a full size Vita mm-hmm. for it, oh, especially because she used it and like the whole thing is like you put it on, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Kevin's just like, thank, it's like I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like wear like a bracelet. Here's your yeah. Vita. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, oh, man. Yeah, that was, that was odd. Another like kind of campy moment where the, <laughs> she's just little, like holding this miniature veto, the like micro veto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So a lot of the plans kind of like revolved around trying to get Dan um, Davon to not use it, and like Danny kind of pitched like listen we have to vote tyler out if we convince her not to use it and the rest of the committee being like uh i don't know about that and then (laughs) nicole being like well just don't nominate ian and we're good (laughs) and danny being like well eh." (laughs) it's like i kind of have to nominate ian but also i put it up yeah And uh, I think on paper, look, it sucks that Ian's on the block, but he's in a final two alliance with the only other winner in the house. It's time to prove why you guys won $500,000. Like, you should be able to convince people to save Ian if you two are truly, like, you know, the good players that we think you are. Like, Uh Nicole, like, 
get get out there stop crying like and do something you know yeah well yeah there's a there's a few issues here right the first issue is that david still has a relationship with tyler uh like they have a relationship in the pregame that was set up uh by Ovi, and they have like this final two deal like it's kind of been on the back burner for a little bit here but it's definitely still something that David cares enough about and like this kind of guy's lines, team freeze thing, where he's not like super gung ho to get uh, Tyler out, especially when he doesn't have really that strong of a relationship or connection to Ian. So that's the number one uh, issue, or that's, that's one of the main issues. The other main issue is that even if they could get David on board, which I think is possible, uh, Danny, and to a lesser extent Nicole, but mostly Danny, refuse refuses to actually like commit on the shot on Tyler unless she gets the blessing from the entire rest of the alliance because mm-hmm. she doesn't want to piss them off heading into next week mm-hmm. um, which is not happening like there's no way that Tyler or that Cody Christmas and Memphis are gonna sign off on that yeah uh, yeah I think the only way it works is if Enzo, who has had conversations with Ian and has been like, uh, what are you saying makes a lot of sense to me. Tyler's a much bigger target than I am, and yep. Ian uh, is not going to come after me. Uh, so it makes sense. It uh, only would happen if they had Ian, or uh, Enzo, Davon, Kevin, David, and Nicole. But like you said, David, unlikely to do this move. And uh, Danny probably won't take the shot here's my like biggest like problem with this right now and i think it kind of encapsulates like the my entire issue with the new school seasons is like big brother is not a fucking team game like danny if you want to make this move you don't need your team to sign off on it like this they made a great alliance that got them to jury Mm -hmm. what the thing you do now is make your numbers get in line to where you can get to the end and like flip on your alliance. Cause like you're not all going to the final two. Like it's, you got to get those outsiders and bring them into your alliance to upend your alliance. And then at least like you have the argument, like I played so hard. I worked with everybody. I did what was in my best interest to get to the end, but it's disappointing that no one's like seeing that right now. Everyone's just like so committed to their team, the fucking committee. Yeah, I shit. mean, there are people uh, like even Memphis and Christmas mm-hmm. this week have started to put the pieces in place to mm-hmm. make a move in the next week or two. Um, but uh, that move would likely be against Nicole and Danny. Right. Uh, so that's that's what I'm saying. Like this is to them. Yeah. Like this is yeah, the yeah. moment where they're gonna either win or lose the game. Right. And if they lose Ian, they're losing the game. It's over. For no, I, I agree. Away. I think that losing Ian puts a huge nail in, especially Nicole's uh, game. Um, it, like they're the uh, basically what's happening now is Memphis is trying to uh, to do what Tyler kind of tried to do, but do it a little bit more subtly and like actually like kind of bide his time a little bit here where Memphis is going to Enzo and making a final two deal and saying to Enzo that he wants to make a final three deal with him, uh, Enzo and Christmas, who Memphis also has a final two kind of situation with, and then also a separate final three with him, uh, Enzo and Cody, who... Cody is another person that Memphis has kind of another final two situation with. So I think Memphis is doing what you're suggesting here. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should, that right was for Nicole and Danny who are yeah. just going to let this moment pass them by. They're going right. to let Ian get voted off and they're going to lose. No, I agree. I think that this was really bad for Nicole and Danny. It's even worse given that Danny for some fucking reason is supposedly not going to use her power to play in the next six to reach. I don't know what the intention of that is. I, I just, there's, there's no way that's correct in any circumstance. No. Why not? Uh, like, 
<laughs> right, right. Like why? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's only good for two more weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so if yeah, you can't so, like, be this HOH, then it's just gone. Yeah. So use <laughs> it. Just and exp- if anyone questions it, just explain. Like I can only use it after I've HOH. So like now is the only time. Like why not? Even if you lose, who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's stupid. That's so stupid. Because that is the one thing. It's like, okay, maybe if Danny won back-to-back HOHs, maybe we're talking like she can salvage this week. But if she's not going to use that, which I didn't know until you just brought up, like, GG, Danny, thanks for showing up and being yeah. less exciting than your last incarnation <laughs> by a lot. God. I mean, yeah. Like, Danny, two weeks ago, was in a really bad spot. Like, she was potentially going home the last week, right? Like, if Christmas hadn't won last HOH, if, if there, was, there was, like, three or four people who could win, uh, who could have won HOH last week, uh, where Danny wasn't going to be, like, in an enormous amount of danger, uh, and one of them happened to win. Um, so she really dodged a huge bullet there. Uh, she kind of got like a new reprieve in this game. And then on top of that, she won the next HOH. So she could try and restructure this game around herself and Nicole. And she has failed to do that. Like she's playing very, very scared. Uh, she is very, she's kind of gained more faith in this alliance than she should have in it. Uh, like she had already started to distrust Tyler, distrust Cody to an extent. Um, and that was correct of her to do. And now she's kind of flipped that around like, you oh, know, the alliance is the way for me to go forward. And there's there's just no way that that's actually going to work out well for her. Like she, her and Nicole are number five and six in the alliance. P- potentially even six and seven if you include Enzo. Um, so, yeah. It's just, it's this is, this is bad. This is a, like... Obviously, like you never want to nominate four people, but that's not the reason this HOH is a mess for Danny. And like, no, the no. other people in the house know that it's a mess. Like Enzo constantly is saying this week that this HOH is a huge mess for Danny. Yeah. <laughs> and he's right. It's, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. But I will give credit to Cody, who is playing really great. And for some reason, he is able to convince Nicole and Danny to not act in their own best interests. Like, They'll, they, they like go to him and be like, so can we vote off Tyler? And he'll just be like, no. And they're like, ah, damn it, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> he'll blame it on uh, Memphis and Christmas even too. Mm. Like he'll like kind of be like, yeah, no, I, I don't think that that'll fly with Memphis and Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, obviously he doesn't want it to happen either as he said in yeah. fire rooms this mm. past week um, where you like Tyler in there as a shield for him. Yeah, which makes sense. He's playing great. He's a fucking really good player. Like, I mean, we've said it this whole time, right? Like, Cody is killing it this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> I was like, I love it. Um, which, I mean, hey, good for him. Like, if he yeah. wins, I think it will be well-deserved. And uh, oof, bad look on Danny, too, for being written up for making fun of Ian's disability and then evicting him the next week. Like, Jesus oh my Christ. God. You know. Yeah, that's I mean, terrible. That's, like, the worst. I mean, it was mostly Memphis and Nicole, but Danny was there laughing along, too. So it's just, like... And I think Christmas was there, too. It could be wrong on that. But I know at least those three, and it was just, like... That's a bad look. That's, like, a terrible look. <laughs> That's one of the main reasons why Danny didn't want to put it up at all this week, and she tried her best to get Davon to not use a veto so she wouldn't have to. Um, right. I will say, like, okay. especially in the last episode, there's so much complaining from Danny, like, about oh, yeah. how hard this HOH is. Is like, you hung on to the wall. You can fall off the wall if you wanted. Like, no. No. you put yourself in this position. I don't feel sorry for you. That's been a oh. huge thing this season in general with, like, the people in power and, like, this power alliance as well is they're incredibly, like, wanky. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, like, like, they just, like, everything in this season has basically gone their way. And they can't stop whining about it how like hard it is that they're getting their way every single week. And it's like, it's the most infuriating thing ever. 
<laughs> to watch. I mean, like, you know who recognized that winning HOH and evicting people could cause bad feelings? Dr. Will. He realized that in season two. Pretty much the first season of the, how this show works. Like, you at this point, you know the consequences of winning HOH. Like, stop complaining about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much. I mean, it's also an all-star season. Like, everyone knows the drill here. And, like, I feel like, if anything, you're more merited to make a move. And, you know, the blood isn't as, you know, bad as it would be on a, you know, all-newbie season. Because it's like, oh, it's all-stars. We've all been here before. We, have, we all have something to prove. We all have to make these moves. And everyone's, like, playing like it's their first time again. It's just... It's ridiculous. If you ever win HOA, just own it. Like, I mean, like there are bad situations. I think Danny having to nominate four people is rough. But like, like Ben said, it's not the only reason why this is just wrong. Like, she should have. If she really wants Tyler out, and then nominated him on a whim, um, because she had to. And it, granted, that's a tough spot. But like, obviously, she picked him for a reason. Mm. So like, I didn't even believe her when she was trying to play off. Oh, I was so panicked. It was like, no, yeah. like you know exactly what you're doing. Like. Mm. You take the shot, you got to hit. Don't pretend to miss on purpose, yeah. you know? <laughs> like I think, that, too, so. Tyler pointed Stupid. out, like, this new meta of BB just makes so many hurt feelings. Like, uh -huh. by not drawing a line in the sand and by not declaring, like, I might like you as a person, but you're not in my alliance and I'm going after you, by pretending, like, you're cool with everyone – when you do have to make a move and vote them off, it hurts them so much more than just uh -huh. from the start being like, hey, it's a game. We're not in an alliance. Sorry. Yeah. And they're falling into that trap real bad. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, if anything, that's why we've gotten bitter juries, like, for the last few. Um, last year. Recent. Yeah, the bitter yeah, jury. Yeah. I was able to overlook it, but that was only really because that alliance like imploded on itself and everyone went after each other. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. What what do we think? Any chance Ian stays this week? It looks unlikely. Yeah. I mean, if I want, if I was Ian, there's no one other than Nicole. I theoretically, I would want to be up against other than Tyler. If I'm trying to convince, my, you know, the house to make me stay, so yeah. I think he has the best shot he's gonna get. I mean, if he's on the block next to anyone else; it's no brainer. <laughs> but it's like the namesake of Tyler. I think is he's he's the best shot he's gonna get. Absolutely. So if he plays hard enough, I think I could see it. I think he, Tyler is gonna stay. But like, if Ian pulls this off, I mean, like that's just masterful. But it's possible. Definitely possible. Yeah, he's going to have to work so hard <laughs> to make this yeah. happen. I don't see it. Unfortunately, I love Ian. No. I don't want to see him get voted off, but I don't see him pulling this off. And honestly, man, you did this to yourself by not reaching out past Nicole like to make any inroads with people. So I, I imagine that's why he was so frustrated in the diary room after he got renomed. Um Kind of being like, shit, I completely missed the boat yeah. on this. But, uh, I mean, you got to be proactive in Big Brother. Like, uh -huh. uh, this passive style of gameplay gets you nowhere. Uh -huh. So, Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's rough. I think that he had kind of a blind spot in, like, thinking that Danny would never nominate him this week. Uh -huh. And right now, when he's trying to campaign, he has a blind spot and not realizing that as of right now, Danny would not break a tie in his favor if a tie were to even miraculously happen. So he's he's really spending a lot of effort in the wrong places trying to talk to people like Memphis who are never going to change their mind. Right now, his only out right now is to get Danny to be okay with like drawing a line against her alliance. But that seems like a very difficult thing for him to realize that he has to do and do by tomorrow night. Like, it's not going to happen. And I don't think even if he realizes that, I'll, it, it would be very difficult for uh, Danny with her current mindset to, uh, to make that kind of a, a flip in her decision making mm -hmm. in such a short amount of time. So I think it's done. Yep, it's unfortunate, but 
is what it is. Yeah. Uh, you next have to week will be David too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which is not going to happen. So yeah, next week we'll probably be talking about uh, Leon, Ian's uh, legacy <laughs> as far as Big Brother goes, and it sucks. Um, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you guys want to, I guess, talk about, you know, if there is any of the interesting things that could theoretically happen next week? Uh, well, yeah, I was I think... thinking... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking... Um, um... Am I going? Yeah, we can yeah. cut this part out. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that double eviction's coming soon. What do you guys think? Either next week or fo- following week, right? Yeah, when does it normally happen? Uh, I always forget. Yeah, well, they've been, in recent seasons, I feel like they've been pushing it later and later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also with these powers uh, not uh, expiring until the end of next week, so a week from tomorrow. Mm, that's true. Uh, or I guess a week from the veto ceremony, I guess. Cause, so like, I, I think it would probably be two weeks from tomorrow is the likely, uh, likeliest double eviction. Um, so... We might have to wait a week to for something crazy to happen unless we get an HOH like a Davon, Kevin, David, uh, which could be interesting. Even Tyler uh, might take a shot at Danny next week, um, and that would be interesting to see the fallout of that and see like how Nicole kind of repositions this herself if Danny does end up going. Um, otherwise, I think anyone else in that primary alliance winning probably just tries to get Kevin out. And mm. like marks time for a week and waits until the week after to actually make a move. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would love for uh, any of David, Davon, Kevin winning HOH. I think that's our only hope of uh, That'd be great. interesting week next week. If not, um, it's going to be probably more complaining by me on Twitter about these people not making moves. Yeah, <laughs> not being exciting, not entertaining me. <laughs> this is the most important thing, clearly. Yeah. Who cares if you lose five hundred thousand dollars if you entertain the viewers? <laughs> I mean, like you mentioned, like the passive gameplay only benefits whoever is in the best position within mm-hmm. the status quo, which is right now Cody and Enzo. Uh, yep. so anybody except for Cody and Enzo should be trying to do something. Mm-hmm. And like I said, Christmas and Memphis are trying to do something, kind of, mm-hmm. um, but. I don't think that Memphis's long-term game plan really makes a lot of sense um, because I don't think that he can beat the people in the Jerry that he thinks he can beat. Um, so yeah, right now at at this point, it looks like uh, a Cody or Enzo win is probably uh, going to be happening unless something crazy happens, some like crazy string of competition wins by people on the outside. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I think, too, like, I, it's not to say that the passive gameplay can never work. Steve Moses played it very well. He did know where he was in the Alliance, and he knew that by the time his name was going to come up, it was going to be in situations where he would be able to either protect himself or take shots with the various comps. Um, the thing is, like, these people need to... <laughs> realize where they are in the alliance and i don't think everyone is realistic with where their situation's at and that's that's the problem there's no real self-awareness of the pecking order yeah and steve also had vanessa mm-hmm. there who is like one of the most like blatantly self uh like uh <laughs> you know selfish players uh in the game uh and so Vanessa was never going to just kind of like let the Ost twins, mm-hmm. you know, roll over her and just like take fourth or fifth place. Right. So Steve always knew that like Vanessa was somebody who could win end game comps and make the moves that needed to be made that would also propel him forward. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a very good point. I mean, and to me, I don't understand, like, I don't understand having a like pretty decent shot at winning five hundred thousand dollars and not doing everything in your power to put yourself in the position to win five hundred thousand dollars and it just doesn't make sense to me right you know like 40k is nice but five hundred dollars five hundred thousand dollars a lot nicer there is like kind of a a 
game theory idea of like playing to win versus playing to not lose. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's like a lot of this kind of thinking going on in terms of these players being super like risk averse rather than like realistically and objectively uh, analyzing their own position and like trying to actually pinpoint a path forward to a victory and not just like surviving for two more weeks. <clears throat> and uh, I definitely think with the new school uh, gameplay, there's a lot of people who play to not lose and then just like pray that they win comps, which like, you know, it can work out. Like it has worked out in the past for players. Like, you know, talking about Ian Terry, who was uh, heading out the door this week. Uh, he's somebody who, in my opinion, played to not lose in BB14 and then just kind of got lucky in terms of winning comps in the end game and also having a, a self-interested player like Dan, the same way that Steve kind of had a self-interested player like Vanessa that made moves that tangentially benefited him. Um, and I think that we're kind of seeing a situation here with Ian going out where he, where that like style of gameplay is just like inconsistent. You have to get lucky or you have to have somebody else who is like attached to you, who is willing to make self-interested plays. Ian, I guess, mm -hmm. thought he had that with Nicole, but Nicole is like self-interested, but she's also very risk averse on top of that, where she, she kind of like waits and bides her time until she finds like the perfect opportunity to make some kind of move where she can jump ship and do something. Mm -hmm. And I think Nicole might've missed her shot this season. Yes, I agree. And I think, I mean, she missed it the first time also. She nailed it, obviously, the second time. And having Corey there, to, uh, who was also decent at comps, helped her, sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sucks, but I think that's a great point. You know, if you play not to lose, you're not going to win. So, right, like, right. Um, and yeah, I guess at the end of the day, why can't these people just be more like Vanessa and Dan? <laughs> so easy <laughs> but no, I mean Christ. at least be self interested like and I don't know maybe uh, maybe that's a character flaw of mine <laughs> to where I can't see why you'd play not self interestedly in the game but also why go on the show if you're not going to do everything you can to win right I don't know I don't know guys I'm disappointed in a lot of players me too Anything else we want to add before we get on out of here for this episode? No, we um, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call my shot though. I think Enzo's winning the season. Enzo, all right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> all right, Chad. Where can they find you online? You can find me on Instagram at Chadley JP and on Twitter at Chad Perry P A R R Y two five. And yeah. Awesome, Ben. How about you? Uh, you can find me on social media platforms at Ben Sharon. That's Sharon with two R's. Yeah, and uh, be uh, tweeting, I guess. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at the fake Mar. That's B M A R R. You can follow me on Instagram at Super Marbro, and you can follow the channel on Twitter at WG Everything on Instagram at Wicked Get Everything on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wicked Everything, and search us on TikTok Wicked Get Everything. Um, for people who are into reality television and uh, LRGs, we just did an interview with our friend Chris Lord, who runs the Survivor New York LRG. So if you've been interested in these fan-made games, I know Sequester has been very popular. Ben and I played in that, didn't do great, so don't, don't bother trying to look up the archives of those. Um, <laughs> If you're interested in like the behind the scenes of that and getting some inside scoop for the newest season of Survivor New York, check that out and we will see you in the next episode of the Have Not.